Good morning friends. Welcome to program with Akshay and in today's video we will start a new series how to deploy .NET Core 7 Web API with Docker and Kubernetes. So we are going to start with Docker and Kubernetes. So this video will be a long video. So I have divided the video into two parts. So in part one, we will see what is Docker, what are benefits of Docker, what is Kubernetes, what are the benefits of Kubernetes, and we will create a sample web API using Entity Framework Core. Okay, so this is the part one. And in the part two, we will see the containerization using Docker and Kubernetes on AWS. So let's start the today's video. So before starting the demo, again, there are prerequisites. We need Visual Studio 2022. Okay. We need AWS account. Okay. To deploy our application. So these are the prerequisites. Okay. Now we will start our agenda for our today's video series is nothing but what is Docker. Okay. As I explained in the previous videos, what is Docker? Why we are using Docker? And what are the benefits of Docker? Okay. So, Docker, again, I am explaining Docker is an open source platform. Okay. That enables developers to build, run, and applications deploy quickly. Okay. We can create images of our application and we can build our images of our application on, a, on the server or on our Docker desktop application. Okay. The primary focus of Docker is to automate things. Okay. So basically automate the application deployment uh, inside the container that boots up in the second. Okay. So main focus is automation. Okay. That is why we are using Docker. Why to use Docker? Like as I said, for managing applications and configurations in crucial tasks for DevOps teams, Docker has all the capabilities that kind of pro that kind of resolves the problem in the software development lifecycle. Okay, Docker helps us to build and deploy distributed microservices application with the help of continuous integration and continuous deployment pipeline, which saves a lot of time. So in today's video, we will create a customer microservice okay we will create a docker image okay and whereas uh, we will build the docker image on the server and we will orchestrate that uh, customer microservice with the help of kubernetes okay so that is the main agenda of the uh, today's uh, like the part one and the part two but in today's video series we are going to concentrate on basically what is docker why we are using docker what is kubernetes why we are using kubernetes okay so that is the main agenda for today also we will create a sample web api core application using entity framework core okay so that is the today's goal and agenda okay so what are the benefits of docker application portability okay then faster delivery and deployment scalability isolation security so these are the part of benefits of docker okay high performance so faster delivery and deployment like docker enables to build and deploy application images across every step of deployment in phase efficiency isolation is nothing but like docker containerized and run the application in isolated environment now we can have one container for customer microservices okay we have another we should we can have another container for business microservices okay and these containers can communicate with each other using kubernetes okay so that is called as orchestration we can achieve this with the help of kubernetes okay so basically dockers provide an isolated environment to run each microservice independently okay security okay docker ensures that application running inside the different containers are isolated from each other correct and has different security layers and tool supplies so we can manage that easily okay 
high performance docker is generally faster and takes fewer seconds than basically uh, creating those vms uh, booting those vms then installing iis in vms we, we don't generally install iis in the vms we create a virtual environment it might be ubuntu or linux and so on and so forth we generally install the docker package okay and that's it we clone we clone our repository and we build our docker image so basically the time got saved okay then we have version control management okay so basically we can uh, create various docker images like version 1 version 2 version 3 and so on and so forth okay so this is the benefits of docker and that is why people are moving into docker so what is kubernetes okay Kubernetes is portable, extensible, open source container orchestration platform that managing the workload and services. Okay, so Kubernetes is developed by Google and it is being developed in Go language. Okay, and it is an open source platform. So there are words, there are eight words between K and S. Okay, K and S, there are eight words. So that is why it is called as K8S. Okay, so Kubernetes has all the capabilities to automate container deployment, load balancing and auto scaling. I'm repeating again, Kubernetes has all the capabilities of container deployment, okay, auto scaling and load balancing. So if he, it has container deployments, okay, auto scaling. and load balancing so it manages all the things these three three things that is why people are using kubernetes okay now the question arises why we should use kubernetes okay so containers are a good way to bundle okay to run each an ap application in the isolated environment as in docker like we have customer microservice we have business microservice okay so this microservice are running separately inside the containers okay so they are the best way like to run those microservice in isolated environment okay but we need to manage these containers efficiently without any downtime okay that is where kubernetes comes into play okay so like for example if application is running in production environment okay and the running container goes down okay you will need to create a new container using different commands or some other things but at larger level it really it is very hard to manage the number of containers imagine there are hundred of containers okay which are running on a single server okay that means hundred of microservices or whatever it might be the applications are running on different different uh, uh different if it has different different containers and it is running on the same server okay now suppose there are five to se seven uh, uh microservices or containers are down okay so managing this task is very very hectic okay this is where kubernetes comes into play okay so as a solution kubernetes comes into picture because it has a container orchestration platform and has all the kind of capabilities like auto scaling load balancing version controlling health monitoring auto scheduling and many more okay like kubernetes it monitors everything okay it like it we we can monitor everything in kubernetes okay like what is the uh, what is the health of the our containers okay uh do we need to auto scale our containers like if suppose the traffic or the load is more than 80 percent do we need to really auto scale our containers do we need to uh, really uh, provide load balancing to our containers and so on and so forth okay so these are the main advantage that is why we are using kubernetes okay so as i said there are these are the benefits or of the kubernetes like auto scaling auto deployment fault tolerance load balancing okay we can do load balancing health monitoring okay so basically these are the concepts of benefits of uh, kubernetes okay that is why people are using kubernetes as a container orchestration platform okay now we have something called as kubernetes architecture okay don't worry about that i will explain you in detail okay and in upcoming videos i will create more and more videos on kubernetes okay so this is the architecture which i have drawn for kubernetes okay now the kubernetes 
architecture consists of a master node and a worker node. So this is the master node, okay? And this is the worker node, okay? Now, the master node is managing all the complete cluster, okay? So this is the master node which manages all our complete cluster of the application. So this is the heart of the Kubernetes, okay? You can say, okay, it is the heart of Kubernetes. Correct? Now, it has four components, etcd, API server, scheduler, control manager, okay? Now, user can access the master using the CLI through API server, okay? Now, suppose the user, this is the admin or this is the user. Admin is nothing but your head or the CEO of the company, okay? How we can access the API server through the CLI command, which uses the kubectl, okay? The master node continuously monitors all the nodes in the cluster and takes action accordingly. Okay. So basically it, it monitors all the worker nodes. Okay. This is the worker node one. This is the worker node two. So it monitors all the worker nodes and it takes the action accordingly. This worker nodes are nothing but your containers. Okay. There can be many containers and this master node is nothing but your heart of the Kubernetes, which, which monitors your worker nodes or you can say nodes or you can say containers okay so kubernetes can have more than one master node for high availability yes it can have one more than one so there can be many master nodes which can be managing the many worker nodes okay so like there are four components for master nodes as i said api server okay so the master can communicate with all the cluster through an api server okay if you see the diagram the master node is responsible for the communication to all the worker nodes with the help of an API server. Okay, so that is nothing but an API server directly interacts with the user. For example, like able to apply YAML or JSON files directly to the API server through CLI. Okay, API server has the capability to auto scale as per load. API server is nothing but the front end of the application. That is nothing but you have a UI, like you, you create an application which has a UI and so on and so forth. So that is nothing but the front end of this master node API server. Okay. ETCD. ETCD is used to store all the key value pairs which are used by Kubernetes to manage the clusters. Okay. So like in our companies, the generally the HRs create all the documentation in the files. Okay. In, in our, in our, uh, like suppose Akshay has joined the com XYZ company. Okay. Then the Gopal has joined XYZ company. Okay. So they, they basically uh, store all the data, like there's uh, their experience certificates and so on and so forth in a registry or in the registrar and they store in the cupboards. Okay. So those are nothing but the ETCD. Okay, so ATCD is basically manages all the key value pairs which are used, uh, which are used by Kubernetes to manage the cluster. Okay, it also stores the metadata and the status of the cluster. Okay, so basically it stores the metadata. Okay, it stores the like uh, the, the the key value pair of the metadata object and stores the, the status of the cluster. Okay, ATCD is cons uh, consistent and high availability data store. Okay, it is consistent and high availability data store. Okay, it is responsible for making the lock mechanism to reduce conflicts between the masters. Okay, so like it is responsible, like we have something called as lock me mechanism in Kubernetes. So it reduces the conflicts between between the master. Okay, like if there are more than one master node, then ETCD is responsible that how it manages the multiple master nodes. Okay, so that is the part of ETCD. Okay, so there are features of ETCD like fully replicated, secure, fast, but those are like higher concepts. Okay, scheduler. So what is the use of a scheduler? The scheduler is responsible for distributing the work across multiple different available nodes. So like suppose there are like we have one master node. Okay. And there can be uh, like hundred of containers or hundred of uh, worker nodes. So scheduler is responsible how we can distribute the load between all this hundred containers. Okay. We cannot create one container and deploy all the microservices inside the one container. Okay. So basically it is responsible like how to distribute the workload between different different available nodes okay it also looks for a newly container newly created container in in the server and assign that node okay handles pod creation okay we will see the how the how the pods are created in the in the further lecture series how how we can manage that pod okay so pod is nothing but like 
suppose this is pod so inside the pod we have like the customer service customer api running okay uh, you can say that is the business layer and inside the pod we have customer database layer okay so inside the pod we have customer microservice and customer database so that pod is assigned like we can name that pod like customer pod and we have business pod running in the same server but these pods are running in the way like in the isolated way okay that means the business pod is running in the business container customer pod is running inside the customer container okay so that is nothing but a pod okay control manager Control manager is the main thing behind orchestration. Okay. Control manager continuously looks and watch the health of the node, whether it is response responding or not and taking action or not. Okay. So basically, once the scheduler schedules or distributes the workload across various nodes, the controller manager then basically observes or, or monitors the health of the node, the status of the node. So this is control manager in our uh, in our IT firm is nothing but the manager. Okay, it manages or it monitors all the employees whether they are doing the the task, a designated task, or they are performing or not. Okay, so this is the role of the control manager. Okay, now coming to worker nodes. Okay, so worker nodes in the worker nodes we have something called as kubelet. Okay, and kube proxy. Okay, so what is kubelet? Kubernetes has Kubernetes worker nodes has kubelet to communicate with the master node. Okay, so this kubelet is responsible to communicate with master node. Okay, so this is the part where where the communication happens. Like if suppose the worker nodes need some things, like suppose uh, uh, like uh, the the traffic has gone or or the or the threshold has gone more than eighty percent. Okay, then how he how he can communicate with the master node? So kubelet is responsible for communication to the master node. Okay, for like uh, like this kubelet can pass the information to the API server, and then the API server will will pass this information to the scheduler, and then the scheduler will distribute the workload or you can do the auto scaling or load balancing on the worker node okay so that is the main apply flow of the kubelet okay like it is responsible for carrying the out of the like carrying the actions on the master node listens to the kubernetes ma masters it also send access report for the node to the master so basically what is the report uh, for that particular uh, particular worker node so basically uh, it creates a report and it sends a report to the control manager okay now we have something called as kube proxy kube proxy is responsible for managing the network traffic properly as per the rule defined it also assigns the ip address to the uh, to the to the each pod okay so kube proxy runs on each node and has its responsibility to check that a unique ip address is assigned to the each pod or not so basically it it basically it it, it is it is doing the behind the scenes it is doing the assigning the ip address to the each pod okay it is basically uh, uh, taking the responsibility to check that unique IP address is assigned to the each pod. Because if if the if the both the pods are assigned with the same IP address, then it is difficult to orchestrate that containers. Okay, so that is the role of a kube proxy. Okay, now what is pod? Okay. As I explained, like it is, a, it runs as a single instance of that application. Like we have something called as customer microservice. So that is the single instance of the customer microservice. So it runs as a single instance of that application. It has many resources like IP address, containers, storage. Okay. In the pods, we can create storage also. We can create volumes. Okay. We can attach volumes. Okay. We can uh, attach persistent volumes. Okay. In the pods, we can see that in the coming upcoming lectures. Okay, so basically, it is the control unit. So in Kubernetes, control unit is a pod, and it is not a container. Okay, so pod is nothing but like in our home, we have something called as dabba, and inside the dabba, we keep the things like like chakli and so on and so forth. Okay, so that dabba is nothing but a pod. Okay, so pod generally runs on a worker node. Okay, which is controlled by the master. Okay, usually one pod one pod contains one container okay and without a port kubernetes is not able to run the container because kubernetes only nodes pod not containers okay so this is about pods now container engine like docker okay so the container engine is responsible for running the application okay the containerized application which kubernetes supports the different container runtimes the famous is docker okay so basically whatever the images we are creating 
okay like from build okay and so on and so forth so this this image which we are building is basically is taking care of this part okay so this is the overview of kubernetes architecture okay so we are done with the theoretical part now let's let's look at the practical implementation so what what we did right now is we had seen docker we had seen what is docker what are the benefits of docker why to use kubernetes what is kubernetes and we have seen the architecture of kubernetes okay now let's see the actual practical part where we are going to create a sample web api application okay so i have visual studio running mm -hmm. now let's create a sample web api application in visual studio i have visual studio running let's create a new project let's name the project as web api k8s you can name it whatever you want let's wait for a minute here yeah so we will create an asp.net core web api click on next i will name it as web api k8s and i'm going to host this application inside the hello world and click on next this will create our application select the dotnet core 7.0 framework click on create and this will create our application yeah so we have our application created now we have something called as controllers properties program dot cs folder and everything okay now we will create a new file called as customer details with different properties related to customer let's wait for a minute add a new file let's add a new item and name it as customer details so inside the customer details we will have the properties like customer id customer name address number and pin code so prop yeah so we will have customer id just to speed things up i'm copy pasting customer name customer address customer number yeah customer pin code yeah this will we will have the string we will have this string we can have this as integer and we can have this integer so yeah so the customer properties are being created now the next part is we will create a db context class inside the project for managing all the data related operations again create a new file name it as db context class yeah, let's close this so we we have something called as db context class so basically db context class is like we create the the file for managing the database related things and configuration and we will uh, create a seed data class to insert some data uh, initially while running the application so seed is nothing but a new feature which is provided by entity framework to to basically insert some dummy data when you don't have any database to to into our application so yeah so this inherits db context Uh, db context yeah we need to import the library I guess. so then we create public db context class text class uh, public i missed the spelling and inside the db context we have something called as db context options i guess db context options where it takes your db context class you can name it as options which takes base 
options. Yeah. Am I missing something? Options. Yeah. And I guess we need to close this bracket here. And yeah. So yeah. So that will have nothing. And inside that we will have public db set. Your customer details like customers I'll say it as customers and it has get set properties okay now it is let's include the namespace here yeah let's install the entity framework core this will install the entity framework core and all the packages from the new get we have something called as db set yeah so we are done so we have created our db context class good now let's create our cd data class where we can insert our data from the application seed data correct inside the seed data we will have something called as public we will have this clause a static void initialize options or initialize initialize yep and inside that we will have something called as i service provider i service provider yeah service provider and using we are using namespace using as var context we can use our db context class service provider dot get required service yeah and inside the required service we can pass our yeah so inside this we can write if condition if context dot customers dot any we can use any if it is then return yeah and then context dot customers we need to add some details or like some data to customer details which has customer id you can add customer id as 111 or you can add one then customer name which string string customer address yeah and customer number one two three yeah and we are done almost now put a semicolon here now we had to save our changes to save our changes for the current context we have something called as context dot save changes and we are done our C data is up and running so we can insert our application oh i forgot to add the parameters here db context options it takes db context options i guess yeah of db context class of which db context class yes is i'm missing something db context option required service provider like uh, required service db context options it takes db context options of db context class we need to have this and then it takes this one extra yeah and we are done so, so our seed data is ready now let's create a service where we can add our add the customer delete our customer update our customer and so on and so forth so to create a service we will create a new file called as customer service it's something called as customer service 
and before adding our customer service we will create a interface we will call this i customer service yes and we are done now we will see public task it takes list of customer details yeah get all customer details okay then i will copy paste this to speed up the things now we will have task list to get customer by id and we will have the parameter as integer id then we will have a boolean task as boolean where we add our customer details add customer details and it takes the customer object customer details customer now again we will have update customer again it takes a boolean update customer details and again we will take those customer details cast details and we will have something called as delete customer details again it will take boolean delete customer details and which will have a teacher ID so yeah so basically we will get all the customer details we will get customer by ID we will add customer update customer delete customer and so on and so forth so we have created an interface which will communicate with our service so I have already created a service customer service yeah now we will try to inherit that dependency injection Ah, uh, why? Okay, well, let's have a look later. Public read only. Now we will have that DB context class. DB context class. Good. Now we will create a constructor for customer service and we will pass the DB context class. Good. Now we will have this dot db context class good. Now we will create our first service task. We will add a customer. Say suppose add customer details and what is it is expecting? It is expecting customer details. Customer details good now we will have something called as await because we are using async this dot db context class dot save changes so db context class we are saving entire the details or entire object into our customer okay where result is equal to await now we have to save the, those changes okay db context class dot save changes async because we are using await async now if result is true then return true else false so if result right if result is greater than zero return true else return false yeah and we are done okay why it is not seeking customer so it does not implement get all customer yeah um, we are about to implement that so now we will have let's try to do this way yeah now we will have a delete customer we have integer id then let's implement this where now for deleting the customer we need to find the customer whether 
that a customer is does exist in our uh, web api or with the help of c or in memory database we need to insert that the customer first like suppose in our case we with the help of c database by default we are uh, inserting the data as one like customer id as one like if we insert like customer id two customer three so first it will check whether the customer exists or not if if no then it will throw an error or whatever it might be that customer not found okay so let's find a customer let's find customer data is equal to db context class dot customers dot where x is equal to x dot or you can write that way or maybe more simplified yeah customers You can write that way also. Yeah, so I guess what I was missing there, why the intelligence is not working. Okay, underscore maybe. Yeah, maybe I need to try underscore dot. Yeah, customer ID is equal equal to, yeah, I guess I need to try underscore dot first or default dot first or default yeah so this in this way we can find our customers okay whether it will check whether this customer exists or not yeah if maybe i i am doing things really fast find customer details is not equal to null then we need to delete that data right so db context class dot customers dot remove yeah perfect then where result is equal to again same copy pasting the line await db context we need to save those changes dot save changes async yeah no need parameter here if result is this true else return false and here by default we are return false if we don't find any customer details good so delete customer details is done now let's try to implement rest of the get all for get all it is very simple return await db context class dot customers dot to least async yeah then we are done now we will get the customer by id again return wait pp context class dot customers dot where x lambda expression x dot customer id is equal to id done and update customer details inside the update customer details we will have something similarly for the if no for first for updating we need to check whether the customer exists or not you can do it that way or otherwise you can write like for whatever you are writing for the save yeah we have done for the save you can either return true or false so to speed up things i will not do it right away await db context dot customer class yeah let's write it await db context dot customers dot update where it will take the customer details perfect where result is equal to await then we need to change the yeah if result is true yeah why it is yeah maybe it is ev context yeah so yeah we are done correct and we are able to add the details we are we checking the details yeah save changes async yeah but i guess this is true maybe you need to i guess add the details if i'm not sure add and have add or add range or i guess see if i'm not sure save changes let's let's test uh, test the implementation okay now we have everything okay get customer id showing an error 
why it is throwing an error okay mm -hmm. okay okay I guess yeah what is there uh, okay maybe I'm missing first or default is first or default is call yeah no regenerate okay I guess I'm missing something here uh, okay okay. Oh, okay 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 I am taking lists of customers where I don't require list of customers stupid me go to definition where is that yeah let's delete it because we require only customer by ID yeah and we are done okay so debugging debugging will be part of this uh, video series okay I am not going to copy paste the code we will type it although we can type the code fastly okay and uh, so debugging will be part of this video series okay I don't want it to copy paste the code and and run the demo so we will try to learn and we will try to debug so that is the best way to do it now let's try to create a customer controller we already have a controller folders okay so the good practice is you put all the uh, necessary like suppose we have customer service and i customer service in repository folder so once we finalize our demo we will try to push it we need to create a new customer customer controller add we can say a controller we can create a web api controller yeah empty or whatever it might be you can say actions using yeah we can create actions using entity framework and let's uh, name it as customer controller model we have the model db context class we have the db context perfect we let's add it now this will take some time to add the controller let's wait for a minute here and we can add an api controller with three directions yeah, okay let's name this as customer customer controller and the customer controller is created good now we will have the API route as API controller yeah and we have something called as customer controller and we will create an constructor here now first it is very important to create a constructor called as customer controller and inside the constructor we will some have something called as I customer service which we have created and we will have a customer service or you can name it as underscore customer service depending upon your Covered. We will have had this customer service. Customer. Okay. We need to create read only. Private. Yeah. Read only. I customer service. Yeah. Perfect. Now we need to pass this here. Customer service is equal to the customer service which we have created in the control control KD. Yeah. Proper formatting. Now we have get which will have get all customer details which is having http get now we will try to modify our controller customer details which will fetch the call to customer service dot get all customer details perfect and if customer can write this way also you can customer details is not equal to null then we can basically return ok status right now we are just returning an ok status because we don't have any ui okay and we will return the customer details as written not found or no contained okay else 
return no content or you can return not found okay depending upon your application receives a status code okay now we will have id http get hyphen id we will try to modify this get customer details by id and it receives a parameter as id again where cust details by id is equal to await or no yeah await i guess async await yeah you have to use await i guess we need to modify the method here yeah async await against customer service dot get customer by id where it is expecting as id if customer details is not equal to null again we are returning the customer details return cust details else return no content good so we are done with our two methods now let's try to get post HTTP post yeah probably void post we will try to modify which has async good it will have task as I action result I action result and which is as post and we don't need this which will take customer details cust details that's good now if R is customer inserted or added await underscore customer service dot uh, add customer details where it take customer details good then if is customer interest interest uh, inserted because we are trying a bo returning a boolean value return ok yeah this customer inserted is true else we are returning no content great written okay yeah so that's it and we need to have the last method is http delete so let's proceed i guess update is not we have okay update put yeah put and delete yeah my I'm, I'm blind http put now again where again let's modify let's copy paste this to speed up things it returns i accent result and it takes the customer details let's try yeah post yeah and we have something called as update customer details we will try to add customer details and inside this update let's me copy paste this so we have something called as update yeah is customer updated again we are try to give a better name to a variable good programming practice why it is giving an error okay now what we need to read bad request can return as a bad request yeah no it is not taking bad request why i action result bad request do i need to bad request result okay maybe yeah what i'm missing here bad request oh yeah maybe that is missing good sometimes you act as very stupid yeah and then we will have a delete perfect so http delete yeah integer delete customer 
details and again we will copy paste this and where is customer again we are returning a boolean i guess customer deleted deleted is equal to await underscore customer service dot deleted yeah perfect id and if customer is deleted then return ok else bad request or return bad request and we are done so we are get all customer details we have something called as get all customer details get all customer details by id add customer update customer delete customer and like the, our controller is is in place okay it is throwing an error for get all customer why it is throwing an error let me check okay okay we need to have a sync task Facing task where it high action result again for this async task we can return the path request or no content we are missing this and for this also async task which has i action result perfect no content yeah and we are done now we have created our controller we have created our service we have created our interface db context class c data good now the last and the final thing we need to update our program.cs file inside the program.cs file like we need to configure few services inside the program class related to our db context our product service and in, in memory database okay so the i guess we need to import some dependencies here let's try to import afterwards now we have something called as wire builder web application yeah that is perfect now we have something called as add services to the container where we are going to add our services now here we need to add here first builder dot services we need to add our service basically to inject add scoped yeah we need to add add scoped okay add scoped where we have i customer service okay i customer service comma customer service perfect so we have created a uh, services which added to a container now we had a builder service dot card perfect now we need to add one more suppose for creating in memory database now we have something called as x okay i need to oh lambda functions o dot in memory database in use in memory okay i need to import a new get package use in memory data base where i need to pass my web api k at s i have web api k at s as the solution perfect now i need to add the dependency here go to manage new get package you need to browse entity framework core in memory you need to install this package why package not found let's check in memory and we have those let's install that i accept great let's save our application and we are good perfect now let's add some more services to our program.cs we have 
something called as created seed okay so where app is equal to builder dot build that is perfect now we will add our seed class where we will add a scope app dot services dot create the scope of our seed class correct now service dot service provider where we are why my intelligence is not working okay let's check services dot service provider oh sorry scope dot service provider my mistake yeah service provider and then we need to add the context where context of the seed class services dot get required service where we are trying to inject our db context class perfect yeah db context class correct and that seed data dot initialize our services and we are almost done okay now we don't need this like if app is in the development because we are not creating any environment like staging and so on and so forth control kd okay and let's try to build our project let's wait for a minute okay where the error is yeah and let's try to rebuild it again rebuild solution uh, one failed what is the error okay Am I missing something here? Okay, I guess we have not added our DP context class. Let's add that DP services dot add DP context where we have something called as DP context class with use in memory. Yeah, do we need to add using? Yeah, and yeah, we are done. Good. Let's try to run the application. I'm sure we will have some errors. Let's try to debug that errors. Let's wait for a minute here. Yeah, yeah, build succeeded, perfect. Now let's try to run. So we have created web API application using Entity Framework Core. Good, congratulations. Now let's try to add some data, get some data, update some data and delete some data. Now let's we put a breakpoint where is our customer controller where we are getting all the customer details first and then we will add our customer or get by ID so we will debug the application oh it is throwing an error okay the entity type customer requires a primary key if you are intended to use a keyless entity type call has no key in on model creating okay okay and this is something new okay let's try to figure it out we have something called as customer id and inside the customer id we have no keys where is the customer details yeah i guess we need to add a keyless feature for our entity framework because we don't have anything called as uh custom customer uh like we don't have anything called as the primary key in our application so let's name it as keyless yeah so keyless is nothing but like when you don't have any primary key defined in your application and using you're using in memory database where you are trying to uh, uh insert the insert the data into the uh, database which 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 your uh, details or which yeah so keyless is nothing but a class where we can create the properties of a class where we don't have any primary key defined in it and when you are using an in-memory database you need to save the object or save the data into the database so basically it marks the type as keyless entity 
okay so you have something called as property in our application which has customer details and we have something called as customer id but we don't have any primary key assigned and we need to create a tb context class which takes like on model creating and you have to basically up do a a, a a hack or a bypass where you have to tell the DB context class that I already have a key defined in our application or in our VAP API in our DB context class and inside the DB properties where you have to specify it has no key. So we write protected override void on model creating perfect which takes a model builder and inside that we have something called as model builder dot entity which will pass our customer details and we will tell this db context class we i boss i already have a key you don't need to worry it which has customer id okay we are passing the properties uh, like customer detail uh, uh, properties and which has keys like customer id and inside the customer details where i am specifying as a keyless entity type okay now let's try to run the application and when you should able to build it yeah we are able to build the application now let's run the application and we will there you go our application is up and running now let's try to get the details first try it out execute okay this is get by id one did we had a breakpoint there i am not sure get by id yeah we had a breakpoint there yeah execute and yeah we are able to get the details customer details perfect cost details by the intelligence is yeah yeah this is loading yeah perfect tomb bibli one akshay one two three and written okay good now let's try to add a data okay post try it out yeah i will add it customer one two three pin code as yeah this tp context this dot tp context dot c basic no yeah something called as tp context class dot add no cost customers dot save or add async yeah i guess add range async or save we don't have something called a save so yeah i guess add async and we need to pass customer details yeah customer details i'm not passing the customer details in the parameter and let's check for update also yeah update is correct we need to to await here perfect now let's try to run it and this should add our customer details no this dot uh, a feed no db context oh this is not good this is not good a wait yeah yeah customers dot update why it is throwing in me error and here is here could be found you are missing here yeah. what i am missing here yeah. because this is the same thing of yeah. it customer var result correct then this is correct update yeah update yeah so i guess this is needs to be just update yeah i guess yes right, let's try to run the application where we will try to update the name we will try to get all customers yes let's add the details first now let's add it let's post correct now let's try it out we will have i now let's try to add a customer now let's first get the customer we already have one customer yep now let's try to add a customer for adding we need to post try it out then let yeah so we need to post a customer so yeah and we will try to add a detail copal 
we will try to add the details to PVD. Number as 5555 and the 777. And let's try it out. Execute and we should have to add customer details. Yeah. Am I added? Yeah, post. I use it post. Okay, not an issue. I will try to get it. Yeah, try it out and execute. Okay. And once you execute, you should have two customers in place. Yeah, perfect. So this is the way you can try it out the VBPI using delete, update and so on and so forth. So for this part, we have seen uh, how we can create an web API using Entity Framework. We have seen uh, like Docker, what is Docker, the benefits of Docker, what is Kubernetes and benefits of Kubernetes. In upcoming lecture, we will see how to uh, create an AWS server using an Ubuntu image. We will see how to create a Docker file. We will build the Docker file. Whatever the code we have here, we will upload that code uh, inside the GitHub repository and we will clone that repository on our server. We will build the Docker image. We will create a Kubernetes pod and inside the Kubernetes pod, we will try to build that. We will try to run that container inside that pod. So this is the upcoming part. Uh, thank you for watching this today's part. Have a great day. Bye-bye.